Hello! This video will show you how to use and get the most out of table views. Tables provide an efficient format to store and organize information, as well as filter, sort, or group it according to your needs. To add a table to your workspace, you can click on the New Page button situated towards the top of your sidebar. Click on Add To to determine in which team space or page you'd like to add your table, and select Table from the Add New section. You'll then be prompted to select an already existing data source in your workspace, or create a brand new one from scratch. To do the latter, click on New Database. Another way to achieve the same thing is by placing your cursor on a new line, then hitting the forward slash key, followed by the word Table. Then select Table View from the dropdown. The same options will show up, but this time, the table will be embedded directly on the page. We call this an inline database. Should you prefer to view your database as a subpage, click on its six dot icon situated to the left and select the Turn into Page option. Click on your newly created page and the same empty table database will show up. For demonstration purposes, instead of creating a new table from scratch, let's add one from the template picker, which can be found towards the bottom of the sidebar. Click on Templates and scroll down the sidebar to see what's available or use the search bar at the top left to find already built tables you'd like to use. In this case, we're going to add this user research database and add it to the product team space. To move your new template inside a top level page in your team space, simply drag and drop like so. This is what a table view could look like. In this case, this database boasts four different views and you can easily switch between them by clicking on their tabs. In the case of table views, entries are displayed in the first column to the left. As with all other Notion databases, every entry is in fact a page in itself, which you can use to store all the information you want. In the case of this user research database, every entry serves as a user interview. In other words, the title's entry is the name of the person your research team interviewed. Contrary to regular Notion pages, database pages include this property section at the top. To add a property, click on the button of the same name, scroll down, and select the property from the list or look it up in the search bar, name your new property, and click outside the pop-up. Great! Now let's click outside the database page to go back to our database view. To add a new entry in a table view, click on the new button located at the bottom of the first column, or click the blue new button at the top right of the database. Let's add a few more entries to our database. As a reminder, any database or database view's main menu is accessed via this three-dot icon to the top right. Let's go to the Layout section. As you can see, this is indeed a table view. For tables, you can toggle this button on to show vertical lines or toggle it off to hide them. You also have the option to wrap all columns within your table. That is, if your cell contains a lot of content, you can have it appear on multiple lines by turning this toggle on. Lastly, this option allows you to pick the way you want your database pages to appear when you click on them. Your three options are Side Peak, which opens pages on the right side and is the default option for tables, Center Peak, which opens pages in the center of the app, or Full Page, where the database entry takes up the entire page instead of having the database visible in the background. Let's go back to our table's main menu. Remember that you can go to the property section to show or hide the properties you want. An open eye next to a property means that the property is visible, whereas a closed eye means it's hidden. You can also click on new property to add another property to the database and click on each property's six dot menu to alter them at the granular level. Now, this is where to go to filter your database entries. That is, show only a selection of data based on specific filtering rules. For example, this table view only shows tasks whose status is completed. Go here to sort your entries according to properties. For instance, you could choose to display your tasks in descending chronological order. This here translates as date descending. Now, this is a suggestion to group your entries according to one of their properties. As an example, this view groups entries by task, which separates all database entries into smaller groups one for each task. 
Now, the Sub Items option enables you to add sub items to already existing database items, items that are also pages in themselves. To use this feature, click here. You'll be invited to rename the parent and sub item fields as needed. These will appear as properties in your database. Now, click Create. An arrow pointing to the right should now appear next to every table entry. Now let's click on the arrow, hit New Sub Item, and name it like so, followed by the Enter key. Here are a few examples of sub items you could add to this user interview. As you can see, each sub item is a page in itself, boasting the same properties as parent items. Notice that the parent item property automatically links to the parent item it is related to. Equally, you can see the sub items that are linked to a parent item here. For this database, the option of sub items is handy because many of these tasks require further actions from different team members. This makes it easier to set out and accomplish what needs to get done. To hide sub items, simply click on the downwards pointing arrow next to the parent item. Let's go back to our table menu. Click here to lock your database and prevent it from accidental changes by team members. You can also copy the link to this particular view, duplicate the view, or delete the view. Finally, a great thing you can achieve with tables specifically is calculations. Hover over the bottom of any column and you'll find the Calculate option. Click on it and a few choices will show up. These depend on the type of information the column contains. In this case, folks are interested in knowing the average amount of minutes it takes users to complete a task. Fittingly, they selected Average from the dropdown, and this number now appears at the bottom of the column. That's all for this video. As you can now appreciate, Notion tables are dynamic databases that can be customized down to your every wish. We hope this video gave you the tools you need to create your own powerful tables, ones that can then help you focus on doing what you do best. And if questions still arise, please visit our help center at notion.com help. Enjoy!